Gentlemen, welcome to tonight's Richard service. We are starting on a somewhat unusual manner this evening with praise to God for all He has done for us. By the way, the song playing is titled Holy, uh, it's titled Carry Me, Carry Me. And the same Holy Spirit carry me to the place of power, to the place of favor, to the place of increase. Amen. Amen. All right. So, good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us tonight. It promises to be an awesome time in God's presence. Uh, I look forward to a great time of fellowship with you tonight. So, please... Bring out your Bibles. Uh, I'm going to jump right into it. There's a lot of things we would like to cover today as God gives us grace. Amen. But before we do that, we have to pray. We have entered into his presence with thanksgiving. Let's enter into his courts with praise. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity for us to come before you. Thank you for preserving our souls. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for vitality. Thank you for another opportunity to be alive today. We return to give you all the praise and glory for who you are and all that you've done for us in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask and pray that as we have come to hear from you tonight, that you will speak to us. Open our eyes, O Lord, that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. And I declare and declare that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he has anointed me to open the eyes of the blind and to turn men from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. And as the word of God goes for tonight, the power of God goes with it to bring these declarations to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for those joining us on Instagram, thank you so much. Those joining us on Facebook, thank you also so much. Tonight we want to talk about the very important topic. Very, very important. Um, just to give you an, a background, this month we've been talking about restoration. That was the theme the Holy Spirit gave us for this month of August 2020. Restoration. Our text is from Jeremiah 30 verse 17. The Bible says, I will restore health unto you. So most importantly, we have been focusing on the area of restoration of health. Amen. So in our Sunday services, for example, uh, we've been doing a series on Jehovah the Doctor. Jehovah the Doctor. Um, so uh, in our midweek services, we have been talking about the believer and his health. The believer and his health. Tonight, we want to take a different dimension uh, to this topic. And... We're going to be talking about the believer and his mental health. The believer and his mental health. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will help us tonight to gain an understanding of God's plans and God's agenda for our mental health. You know, question is, does God care so much about our mental health? Or does he just care about our spirit? Or does he care more about our bodies? Uh, tonight we'll find out and tonight I want to show you from scriptures how much of God's care it, uh, um, pertains to our minds, our soul. The scripture uh, for this teaching is 3 John verse 2. 3 John verse 2. The book of 3 John only has one chapter. So technically it is 3 John chapter 1 verse 2. The Bible says that 
that beloved I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Uh, let me read the verbatim from scriptures. Those are some of the scriptures I know by heart. But let's fulfill our righteousness and read from the pages of the Bible. 3 John verse 2. It said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. So this is one of God's desires for us as man is prosperity in our hearts, in our soul, and also in our body. You see, when we talk about mental illness, it is a very real and sensitive topic. But I believe that the answer is not in medication, even though medication works. It's not a prescription. I believe the answer is in scriptures. Okay? So most of the things I'm going to be talking to you about tonight, I'm not a licensed um, uh, medical professional. I'm not even a medical professional. Uh, but I understand uh, from the pages of scriptures how this correlates to our mental health. So I'll be sharing with us very briefly tonight on this topic. When we talk about mental illness, we're talking about diseases of the mind. And we're not talking about disease as in a plague, but we're talking about the inconveniences that our minds can go through. Okay, we're talking about the dis-ease. You know, anything that does not give you ease, E-A-S-E, -E, uh, is a disease. Okay, so we're, we're referring to issues that habitually affect the soul of man. Mental health is very significant in the life of any man. Because a sick mind is primarily a sick being. A sick mind is a sick human being. Anyone who is sick mentally is sick. No matter how good looking they may appear. No matter how educated or how much money they flunk around. Mental illness is real. And it's, it's, it's very, very uh, pertinent. Okay. Um, so, so from this scripture we just read, we understand something. That first, God wants us to prosper. And that prosperity extends to our minds, our soul. Okay, Man is a tripartite. Man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. So when God gave this mandate of prosperity, God was talking about these three dimensions of his life. His spirit, his soul, and his body. And you and I must take responsibility. Okay, There's the God part and there's the human part. Oh, somebody wants to share something. Uh, we might not be able to do that tonight. Uh, but I, I don't know if you have a questions, but let, let's, let's take this. Oh, okay. Maybe that was a but there. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, I, I, was, I was thinking that you had requested to join my video intentionally. But thank you for showing that you're, you're listening. I appreciate that a lot. Um, so, like I was saying, so man is is a spirit, and he has a soul, and he lives in a body. When you get born again, when you give your heart to the Lord, what happens is that your spirit gets transformed, but your soul and your body don't go through the same process instantly. There is a process for the renewing of your mind. Okay. Oh, okay. I see you clarify that, that you were trying to request your friends to join. No problem. No problem. Uh, this is an interactive Bible study. Usually we do a two-part series where people can call, um, join in, and share uh, what they have studied from God's Word. But this week, we took it to recharge and catch up on chapters we have not read. We're going to continue that next week. So maybe next week, you can, you can actually be on live video with me uh, as we share God's Word. Okay? You always appreciate the chain. God bless you. Um, yes, so where was I? So, 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 so when you got born again, your mind and your body was not saved, okay? That is why you can still find someone who has given their hearts to the Lord misbehave. Their mind and their body is not saved. <laughs> Amen. So, 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 so we need to be very careful, and I need to lay that foundation for us as we talk about this. Tonight, I'm going to be showing you basic or common mental health issues 
And I'll show you from scriptures, people, Bible characters that had those kind of issues too. I love the word of God. I love the word of God totally because there is nothing happening to man or there's nothing that will happen to man that God has not already made provisions for in scriptures. Okay, there are people in scriptures that have battled with mental health and overcome. And there are people that we can model our lives after. They are real people. It's not a fiction. The Bible is not fiction. These people actually did live. They had flesh. They had blood. People knew them. They married. They had kids, you know. So, so, so the Bible gives us that platform. So tonight I'll be showing us people that went through mental illness or mental health issues in scriptures. And then I'll be showing us how, to, how God wants us to deal with mental health. Please, if you have anyone you know who has a mental health issue, don't discriminate against them. Please, please do not. Okay? They are going through something. It's real. Even if we don't understand it, even if you don't get it, even if it doesn't make sense to you, but those guys are going through something real. Okay? Uh, and we, we must be there for that. We must show them our support, okay? So I, I want to say that. So mental health is something we should all be aware of and constantly strive towards making healthy. Just like you, you study your Bible, the Word of God, and you pray to keep your spirit man healthy, you go to the gym to work out and, you know, make your body healthy. You also need to do certain things to keep your mind healthy. Don't neglect your mind. You know, let me tell you this. You know the most neglected and the most vulnerable of the three aspects of man is the mind. People don't know that there are things that you can do to exercise your mind. They don't know. They know what to do to exercise their spirit. They know what to do to exercise their physical body. But what about the mind? People have, some people have not done anything intentional for years, decades, to keep their minds exercised. So tonight we're going to be talking about them. You know, there are several factors that determine or that contribute to mental illness. Several factors. Okay, there's the physical factor of where you live. Okay, um, the, the kind of pollution in your air, you know, the kind of pollution in the environment that you're exposed to. Um, some people have genetics um, um, mental illness in their lineage or in their family that runs in the blood, that's genetics. Uh, some people have mental illness as a result of poor nutrition, okay? Just poor feeding habits, poor eating habits, that type of stuff, okay? Some people have it as a result of side effects of other medications. So they are taking a medication and the side effect is giving them mental illness. Yes, it's real. It's real. You know, for example, you know, they, they say, you know, about 15% of women, I think it was 10 to 15% of, uh, of pregnant mothers, uh, you know, after delivery go through postpartum depression. Okay, that could be as a result of so many things. Hormonal imbalance, um, you know, medications taken during pregnancy, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, so the, that can make someone actually go through that. Then there's, there's the substance abuse. There's substance abuse that can lead to mental illness. Yes, abuse of anything. <laughs> okay, so that, that's, that's something. One more that I need to share with you that most people don't pay attention to is the spiritual aspect of mental illness. Do you know that curses is a scriptural factor in mental illness? Curses. Some people are just... They've just done something and they have been cursed. For example, look, look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. God himself placed a curse on people that don't serve him. Yes, Deuteronomy 28. If you read from verse 28 to 32, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28 to 32. He said, the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness an astonishment of heart, you know, and thou shalt grow up at noonday. In fact, you, if you read down from Deuteronomy 28, from verse 28, you see that God himself placed a curse on those who don't serve him. You know, the curse started from um, verse 15 of Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28. 
you know, it says, but if, if but it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So there is the spiritual dimension of curses that lead to mental illness. Okay, there's, there's a dimension of that. So, you know, whatever the case may be, I have a word from the Lord for you tonight that even as this message is going on, you will be healed. You will experience liberty in your mind, in your soul. Okay, your mind, your soul, your, 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 your emotions, your intellect will be transformed in the name of Jesus. Okay, what are some common mental illnesses? I'll talk about three of them. There's all kinds out there, and you can do your research online. I want to talk about three primary um, causes or common mental illnesses. The first I want to talk about is depression. Okay, depression is by far the most common mental illness encountered in the world. You know, I was studying about this, and you know, the World Health Organization uh, states that about 3.8 percent of the world. Did you get that? 3.8 percent of the entire world suffers from depression. 3.8 percent. In fact, they, break, they broke it down into, into, into other categories and they said 15 percent of adults all over the world and 2.8 million adolescents have depression. 15 percent of adults all over the world and 3.8 percent of everybody in the world suffers through depression. So depression is a common mental health illness. It's a common mental health illness. It, it affects both young and old. It affects people from all nations, races, color, gender, whatever it is. Depression. Around 6.7% of American adults have experienced depression. That is a whole lot of people that are going through depression. That's a whole lot of people that are still in depression. But like I said, through this service, God is going to rot healing for somebody in the name of Jesus. If you have anybody in mind, please, as we go through this word, take notes, uh, send them this recording, you know, pray with them and, and share some of these things I'm going to be sharing with you tonight. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, some symptoms of, of, of depression. Symptoms of depression includes a feeling of guilt, tiredness, lack of interest in usual activities, isolationism, loneliness, change of appetite, you know, sudden participation in risky behaviors, sad mood, and declining cognitive functions. Those are symptoms of depression. Depression is, a, a, is the, the flattest, the lowest state of the mind, where the mind no longer demonstrates or shows enthusiasm in anything, you know, but isolationism, you know, sudden appetite changes, all that kind of stuff. But do you know that depression is not new? Depression, even in Bible times, has happened to great Great, great Bible characters. I can tell you seven of seven people in the Bible and scriptures that experience depression. Seven of them. Look at Hannah, for example. Hannah, a woman called Hannah in the Bible in First Samuel chapter one. You know, she 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 was barren. The Bible says the Lord shut her womb, and she didn't have a child for a long time. She was barren. She was mocked by. Uh, 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 the second wife, Pedina, this, which is um, the, 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 the second wife of her husband, Hannah went through a lot, and Hannah was depressed. Hannah was very depressed. If you look at First Samuel chapter one, from verse five to ten, the Bible says that. But unto Hannah, the Lord is talking about Elkanah. He gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. And verse 6, look at some of the, the symptoms that Hannah demonstrated. I'm reading from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 6. It says, And her adversary also provoked her, so for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. Uh -huh. 
And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Hannah went through some depression, not having a male child. In fact, she told her husband, she said, you know, give me a, a, a son. Give me a son. And you know, verse 10, and she was in bitterness of, of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. Hannah experienced depression. Hannah experienced depression. But the good news was this, that in, first, in that first Samuel chapter 1, if you read verse 19, the Bible says she rose up in the morning and worshipped and returned and the Lord remembered her. The Lord remembered her. If there's anybody under the sound of my voice this evening that is going through depression because of lack of a child or maybe because of a lack of a particular gender of a child, maybe you want a boy, you've, you've, you've had all girls, or you want a girl, you've had all boys and you're being depressed, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you are healed now. The Lord is going to take you out of depression. The Lord is going to fill your heart with joy and gladness and make you smile again in the name of Jesus. So Hannah went through depression. Hannah went through depression. Hannah went through depression. Even Elijah, Elijah went through depression. Yes, Elijah went through depression. Do you remember a time in the Bible where um, Elijah has finished performing a miracle and, 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 and a woman, <laughs> a woman uh, sent for him and said, about this time tomorrow, I'm going to cut off the head of Elijah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Elijah went straight into depression. First Kings chapter 19. You see that in First Kings chapter 19, if you read from verse 3 to 4, Elijah went and hid himself. He was afraid and he went straight into depression. It's a common problem. It's a common problem. But the fact that it's common means that God can solve it. It's not a big deal. It's not hard for the Lord. It's not difficult. God has been healing depression for years. For years. Elijah, the man that sent the call down fire from heaven, a literal fire came from the sky. A man that guided up his girdle and outran a horse. A woman sent and said, I'm going to cut off your head. And Elijah went straight into depression. Yeah, you know, he was telling God, I've done all those great things for you. And blah, 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 blah. Is this how my life is going to end? First Samuel chapter 19, First Kings chapter 19, verse 3 to 4. Hmm? He said, and when he saw that, he arose and went, and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey. Remember we talked about certain risky behaviors? Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree by himself. He left his servants. Isolationism. And he came a day's journey. He walked in a desert. He walked in the wilderness, I'm sorry. For a whole day, a whole day's journey. That's not one mile. That's not two miles. It's probably miles into the forest, into the woods. And he just found a juniper tree and he sat there where nobody knows he was there. Elijah went through depression and he requested himself and said that he might die and said, it is enough now, O oh Lord. Take away my life. Elijah experienced depression. For I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, the angel of the Lord said, touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. For anyone under the sound of my voice, whether you are a minister of the gospel and you have been laboring and there's not been any fruit for your labor, or you have suddenly come under an attack from the kingdom of hell, and you are you 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 are going into depression, you are having thoughts of of, of, of suicide. I pray for you that the same angel that visited Elijah, that same angel will visit you, he will touch you, and you will arise out of that depression in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone who may be frustrated with life, anyone who seems like nothing is working for them, 
That same angel of God that visited Elijah will visit you now in the name of Jesus Christ. And it's going to make you arise out of that depression in the name of Jesus. Elijah entered depression. Elijah, I mean, Elijah was not a regular prophet. Elijah was not a prophet to be joked with. So this thing called depression has no respect or regard for even the anointed. It's going to try. You are the one that's not going to allow it. Elijah went through the depression. Moses exhibited signs of depression. Moses exhibited signs of depression. Remember we talked about um, you know, a sad mood or declining activity, uh, cognitive function. Elijah went through, uh, Moses went through some form of depression. If you read Numbers chapter 11, Numbers chapter 11, praise God. I'm showing you all of this to, to let you know that there is no temptation, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that has come unto you that is not common. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. And when you are tempted, he will make a way of escape. Just like he has made for people in the past. We've given an example of Hannah. We've given an example of Elijah. Elijah. Now look at Moses. Numbers chapter 11. If you read from verse 10 to 16, praise God. God is going to help us to, to, to read through some of these chapters, uh, but we might skip some. So please take your notes, write them down. And go and read that. Okay? Let's just read this one and the other ones I'll let you know where to go and read. Numbers chapter 11 from verse 10 to 16. Moses was an unusual prophet. God said about Moses, he told Aaron and Miriam, he said, I, I speak to other prophets in dreams and parables, but he said, Moses is not in your category. I speak to him like a man speaks to his friend. So Moses was not an ordinary prophet. He was a prophet with anointing, with power, with grace, with ability. Moses confronted Pharaoh as a god. But Moses demonstrated signs of depression. Numbers chapter 11, verse 10 to 16. The Bible says that Moses heard the people weep throughout their families. Every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly against. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servants? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all these people upon me? The burden was too much. The pressure was too much. Have I conceived all these people? Have I begotten them that thou should, shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? When should I have flesh to give all these people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give me flesh that we may eat. Verse 14, I am not able to bear all these people alone because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray. Moses was talking to the Lord. He said, kill me, I pray, out of hand. And if, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. Moses went through depression. Moses went through depression. He prayed that God will, God will kill him. I want to pray for somebody here who may have felt overwhelmed with the burdens of life. Or maybe overwhelmed with responsibilities. And is driving you towards depression. Overwhelmed with tasks, overwhelmed with putting food on the table, overwhelmed with caring for your children, and that is beginning to make you go into depression. I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, God will visit you. The burden lifter will lift your burdens in the name of Jesus, and you will come out of depression in the name of Jesus. Moses went through depression. Another prophet in scripture, Jonah. Jonah went through depression. Jonah went through depression. We're not going to read it, but you can write this down and go and study. Jonah chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Jonah went through depression. David, the man after God's own heart, went through depression. In fact, if you read Psalm 102, verse 1 to 11, 
you see the whole episode there. Psalm 102, verse 11. David went through depression. Job went through depression. Job went through depression. Job lost everything, including his children. And he, 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 he went through a series of bouts of depression. He went through depression. Job chapter 3, verse 20. He was saying, <laughs> the things that Job was saying was, was just out of this world. You could tell a man who's, who has been frustrated. Naomi, another woman in scripture, went through depression. Naomi left her country for a greater pasture. She lost, she lost her husband. She moved to another country, lost her two children. She went into depression. Roots chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. So depression is common. Is common, but each of these characters I've told you about, all of them re re they, they, they experienced restoration, and that is my prayer for our viewers and even for me. Anyone who may be going through any form of depression, God of restoration will restore you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, for example, for Job, he said God gave him twice as much as he had. He said the Lord restored the fortune of Job after he has prayed for his friend, and the Lord gave him twice as much as he had. I pray for you again. Anyone who may be going through depression, maybe as a reason of loss, maybe you're, uh, someone you loved went pa passed on because of COVID-19 or whatever the case may be, I pray for you that God will give you twice as much as you had in the name of Jesus. God will lift you out of that depression. Depression is a very serious mental illness and it affects both the educated and uneducated, the young, the old, the rich, the poor, anybody from any class. But God is the cure. God is the cure. Anyone who may be going through any form of depression, like any of these Bible characters, God is going to come through for you today in the name of Jesus. There's a spirit of depression. There is a spirit of depression. You know, the Bible talks about the garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness, in place of the spirit of heaviness, there is a spirit called the spirit of depression. I pray for you, Masota Libra Dishtagala that 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 weight of depression, that garment of heaviness, be lifted away from you in the name of Jesus, and God will clothe you with the garment of praise in the mighty name of Jesus. God will give you the garment, of, for the garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus. Depression is a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spiritual battle against the mind. It's a spiritual battle for the souls of men. From today, like I said, and I will repeat it again, my God, the God of my father, Pastor Ia Deboe, the God of my father, Bishop David Oedeku, will take away the spirit of heaviness from you and fill, fill you and clothe you with the garment of joy, the garment of praise, the garment of gladness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Depression is real. The second common mental health is anxiety. Anxiety. In fact, anxiety has a twin brother called fear. Anxiety is... is, is Irrational behavior in anticipation of an event that hasn't happened. An irrational behavior in relation to an event that has not yet happened. Depression, uh, I mean, uh, anxiety can cause sleeplessness. It can cause appetite changes. It can cause palpitation of the heart. Your heart just keeps bouncing. It keeps beating fast. You know, there's a, there's a funny story I, I, I heard. Of, of a young girl, you know, she was probably probably around seven or eight. And one day she was crying. And her mom said, why are you crying? She said, I'm not going to have a child. And the mother was like, what? You're only seven. Why, why, are, you, why are you crying over? You're not going to have a child. How do you know you're not going to have a child? You're not even old enough to be in a relationship. You're not even married. You don't have to talk about having a child. The child was going through anxiety of something in the future, okay? So anxiety and, de and depression 
Anxiety comes with fear. It comes with fear. Sometimes the people are sweating in, 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 in a fully air-conditioned environment. They are sweating because they are anxious. The spirit of anxiety has taken over. Some people bite their nails. Some people just have, they're on that, they're, they're on that just a grip, a bout of, 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 of grip, uncontrolled anxiety. Anxiety. But you know what? Anxiety is not new too. And there is a cure for anxiety in scriptures. There is cure for anxiety in the word of God. I give us three people in scriptures that went through anxiety. The first person I want to tell you today is Adam, the first man, went through anxiety. Yes, he did. If you turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3, after man sinned and man fell, Okay, after, you know, this is after the beautiful story of creation, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, God formed man. Genesis chapter 3, sin was introduced into the world. And in Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, I believe, Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says something about how Adam was experiencing anxiety. Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, after he had sinned, the Bible says, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Anxiety over a future event that has not yet happened. Adam just heard the voice, the steps of God, and he became afraid. He became afraid. I pray for anyone under the sound of my voice who may be going through any season or bout of anxiety. I pray. The Bible says the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I decree that that sound mind and soundness of mind be restored to you in the name of Jesus. Anxiety comes with fear. God had not even said anything to Adam. He was already afraid. He was already afraid. Anxiety. Afraid of the future. Afraid of events that hasn't even happened yet. Anxiety is a mental illness. Anxiety is a mental illness. Another person who went through mental anxiety was Jacob. Jacob, yes, the twin brother of Esau. Remember the story of how you know Jacob and Esau were going to, uh, you know, they 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 broke apart and they were going to come together. They were going to see each other for the first time. Jacob went through anxiety. Genesis chapter 32, verse 7. Genesis chapter 32, verse 7. Praise God. Is somebody being blessed by this message? Please put a comment on, on Instagram or on Facebook and let me know what, what you know, let, let me get some feedback. Are you being blessed? Are you learning something? Is God ministering to you? Or have you received the miracle already? Let me know. Put in a text. Put in a comment. And let me know what's going on back there with you. Genesis chapter 32, verse 7. Let's see. Oh, I see the love buttons coming in on Instagram. Praise God. Thank you so much. That's good feedback. Praise God. Praise God. Genesis chapter 32, verse 7. Jacob went through anxiety. Amen. The Bible says in Genesis 32 verse 7, it said, Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. He was greatly afraid and distressed because he was going to see his brother. Anxiety is real. Anxiety is real. Anxiety can happen to anyone. Anyone can experience anxiety. But we must know that the answer is the scriptures. The answer is in the word of God. The answer is with God. I'm not against medication. Medication can, can care. But the real cure to all forms of mental, mental illness is God. The, the, the cure for all, all, every one of them, depression, anxiety, fear, is God. Because it is he who formed us. Is that in your Bible, Psalm 100? It is he that formed us. Let's read that very quickly. So you can know and believe with me for anyone 
who may be having any mental illness, that tonight God is going to heal them. Psalm 100 verse 3. It says, Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So if God made you, he can remake you. If God made you, since God made you, he will remake you. That's how I know that somebody under the sound of my voice, under the te this teaching tonight, will be healed in the name of Jesus. Let's go back to that story. Another example of somebody that experienced depression was Saul. 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 The guy that was king before David took over. Saul. So, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14 to 23, you can read that. It said, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Saul went through anxiety. He went through anxiety. Finally, the mental illness I want to talk about tonight is addiction. Addiction. Addiction is a mental illness. Addiction is a lie that has been told to your brain. Let me explain that. This is the way addiction works. Something, something tells your brain that it cannot do without something. Or something tells your brain that it needs something to live or to exist. And if your brain responds to that, and your brain keeps on responding, and it becomes habitual, you are under the spell of addiction. For example, if your brain keeps telling you you need marijuana, or you need alcohol to feel good, that's a lie. That's a lie. And if, you're, if, you're, if your brain responds in the positive, and you take marijuana, or you take any any hard drugs, or you take any any alcohol, you are falling for that lie. And if you continue to do that, you will be subjected to that. In fact, before that thing tells you or tells your brain, your brain automatically goes to that addiction. The spirit of addiction is real. The spirit of addiction is real. Addiction to pornography. Addiction to biting your nails addictions of alcohol, anything, addiction to, 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 you know, there's all kinds of levels of addiction. Like I said, it, it, it is that, that false signal, that false, that false, that lie that your mind conceives. But there are people in scriptures, again, that suffer addiction. I'm not going to read all the scriptures here because I want to get into the main topic about how to deal with these addictions. Oh, time is fast gone. Noah was a drunkard. In fact, the Bible says that Noah planted a vineyard. He planted a vineyard and he got drunk from his vineyard. So he, he just knew that there needed to be supply of wine. So the guy planted a vineyard. Addiction. You see that in uh, Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 to 21. He planted a vineyard, so he didn't need to even buy the wine. The wine was already there. The prodigal son was another example of addiction. Oh, he had plans. Something told him that, look, you can live a better life than this. Just collect all your father has and let's go spend it. And he fell for that lie. Addiction. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 13. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 13. Even Paul the Apostle, yes, even the Apostle Paul, he said something that gave me a hint of maybe or maybe not, you know, addiction was going on. Romans chapter 7 verse 15. He said, the things I want to do, I don't do them. The things I don't want to do is what I find myself doing. When I do this, it is not me, but the sin that is in me. That kind of hints me like an addiction. Praise God. I don't know if you agree, but that is my observation from scriptures. Romans chapter 7, verse 15 to, to 20. Addiction. The things that I want to do, I don't do them. The things I don't want to do, that's what I find myself doing. That sounds like a definition of addiction. 
Amen. Romans chapter 7, verse 15 to 20. He said, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. For what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would do, for the good that I for the good that I would do, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil I would not, I do. Paul, uh, Paul, but <laughs> I don't want to, it's, a, it's like a tongue twister for me. But that kind of sounds like, you know, like the definition of addition. The things I want to do, I do them not. The things. Praise God. So, but the good thing is this. Paul said, I have finished my race. I have fought the faith. I have fought the good fight. Paul finished well. I pray for anyone under the shadow of my voice that may be under any form of addiction. Receive your freedom now. Receive your liberty. Receive restoration. That prodigal son was restored back to God. Noah, who even though he drank and had a vineyard for drinking, the Bible says, now Noah found grace in the sight of God. You will find grace before God. God will restore you back in the name of Jesus. I pray for families and homes and relationships that have been damaged by alcohol, drunkenness. I pray that God will restore such homes tonight in the name of Jesus. You will experience restoration in the mighty name of Jesus, in the precious name of Jesus. For those of you who have watched our broadcast on Sunday, you probably noticed some drama that happened towards the end of the service. Long story cut short, a woman and, and a man walked into the service by the breeze, the wind of the Holy Spirit. And they gave their hearts to the Lord. And I prayed for them. And I sensed that spirit of addiction. And they, after I prayed for them, they confessed and said they were actually going out to take a smoke. They've been under the addiction of nicotine. And the Lord set her free. Set her free completely in that Sunday service. You can go on Instagram and watch that. It's live there. It's still being recorded. That was what was happening behind the scene. You know, we, we don't have the capacity yet to show everything that happens during the service. But you could hear my voice praying for her. Praise God. I pray for anyone under any form of addiction. Alcoholism, substance abuse, any kind of, you know, any kind of addiction. In the name of Jesus, God is restoring you now. God is healing you now. God is setting you free. The Bible says he sent his word. And that word healed them and delivered them from their oppression. This word of life is setting you free now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. How does God deal with mental illness? How does God want us to deal with mental illness? I will quickly go through this. Very quickly, because this itself, this in itself, it's a teaching. It's a teaching. Maybe we need to break this into two parts. But I want to give you five solid ways God wants us to deal with mental health issues. Five solid ways God wants us to deal with mental health issues. Number one, to deal with mental health issues, you must be saved. You must have accepted the Lord Jesus into your heart. New birth is the primary escape from the spirit of mental illness, be it depression, anxiety, fear, addiction, substance abuse, no matter what you call it. You must be saved. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy life, and I will give you rest. Jesus is calling you tonight. Jesus is asking you to come. Come the way you are. Come with your addictions. Come with your weaknesses. Come with the things you struggle with. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. When you give your heart to the Lord, you have signed your release paper. 
you have signed your release from the prison and the, the imprisonment of addictions, of mental issues. That's why if you are not saved, you are not safe. If you are not saved, you are not safe. When you give your heart to the Lord, several things happen, and I'll just give you three, four things. When you give your heart to the Lord, number one, your lineage changes. Remember at the beginning of this message, we talked about the fact that some addictions or some mental illnesses uh, run through a family, you know, it's genetics and whatnot. When you give your heart to the Lord, you become a member of another family. This family is called the, the body of Christ. When you give your heart to the Lord, the things that used to operate in your former family no longer operate in this new family. In this new family, God, our Father, is never sick. He doesn't have a mental illness. He doesn't go through depression. He doesn't go through anxiety. He never experiences addictions. So when you are saved, you have changed family. So whatever runs in your family, in the physical, does not have a say in your life when you give your heart to the Lord. Very important point. You have transitioned. Your family lineage has changed when you give your heart to the Lord. Number two, when you give your heart to the Lord, you have erased, your past is erased. Your past is erased. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, it said, for whosoever is in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things, all things have become new. When you give your heart to the Lord, your past is past. Your past is behind you. Your past can no longer haunt you. Very important. It's one of the ways, because you know, the devil, the devil gives mental illness by making people feel guilty. It's one of the schemes of, of the devil for inflicting people with mental illness. Guilt over what they've done in the past. Guilt over who they were in the past. Guilt over the lifestyle they've lived in the past. But when you give your heart to the Lord, the Bible says all those things are passed away. Everything is passed away. It's gone. It can no longer come back and bite you. It cannot affect your present. It cannot affect your future. So when the devil wants to remind you of them, you tell him, no, I am born again. I have given my heart to the Lord. Salvation is the primary, you know, I wish, I wish, and this is a very strong wish for any of my medical practitioners who will listen to this or who is listening right now. I wish that anyone that comes to you with a mental illness, you can lead them to Christ. I really wish. Because that is the only lasting solution to, of escape from mental illness. I wish after administering your professional techniques and everything, ask them, are they safe? Because if they are not safe, they are going to go back to their vomit. They are going to go back. Ask them. And if they are not, lead them back to the Lord. Lead them back to Christ. I want to invite you, if you are under the sound of my voice, you are not saved. I'm going to give you an opportunity tonight you must not miss. I don't care what has been running through your family. I don't care what the side effect of any medications you're taking is causing on your mental health. I don't care any kind of curses. That's the other thing that salvation does. It's when you are saved, you, the curse has no more power over you. You are not under the law anymore. You are under the grace of God. You are delivered from the power of darkness where there's curses, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. You are delivered from the power of darkness. You are delivered from every form of curses. So I don't care the kind of curses or whatever the situations you are going through that is causing mental health in your life. If you give your heart to the Lord tonight, your release is established. I guarantee you that in the name of the Lord. I guarantee you that. So you must be saved. Number four, when you are saved, you take back your, the control of your thoughts. You take back the control of your action. You know when Paul said in Romans chapter 5, verse 15, that the things I want to do, I do them not. 
That's because something has been controlling his thoughts. Something has been controlling and dictating his actions. But when he gave his heart to the Lord, he said in Romans chapter 6, verse 14, the Bible says there in Romans chapter 6, verse 14, that sin shall no longer have dominion over you. When you give your heart to the Lord, you change level, you graduate. You are now above sin. Eh? So sin no longer detects your condition. You know, that is the same grace that was upon Joseph. He saw the opportunity to sleep with Potiphar's wife. And that would have been probably the most best kept secret in the world. But that spirit of grace was upon him. He said, sin shall no longer have dominion over you, for you are not under the law. You are under the grace of God. The grace of God can be made available to you. You can get out of that drinking addiction. You can get out of that pornography addiction when you give your heart to the Lord because you take back the control of your thoughts and your actions. I, 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 I perceive in my spirit, this is a good place to end tonight. I, I apologize. I know I'm going to give you five. I was going to give you five. Um, but I'll give you the remaining four next Sunday or, or next Wednesday. But I feel very strongly not to delay. There is somebody under the sound of my voice today. You are going through either any form of mental illness, maybe due to genetics, maybe due to what you've done in the past, maybe due to your mistakes, but you want to return back to the Lord tonight. I want to give you that opportunity. And if you're under the sound of my voice tonight, please bow your heads and say these prayers after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. And I know that you are the Savior. Please forgive me of my sins and wash me in your blood. Write my name in the book of life and make me your child again. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Now I know that I am saved, I'm forgiven, I am now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these ones who have given their hearts to you. I ask and pray that you will receive them. I ask and pray that the same grace that brought them forward to say this prayer and to mean it, I pray that that same grace will keep them, will preserve them in the name of Jesus. I burn the bridge connecting you back to your sin and your old life in the name of Jesus. You will live for the Lord. You will serve the Lord. Every kind of mental illness you used to deal with, those Egyptians you saw today, you will see them no more. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are free and free indeed. The Bible says, whatsoever the Son of Man shall make free, shall be free indeed. You are free. You are free forever. You are free for free. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer with me, I want to hear from you. I want to be your accountability partner. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. I want to help you grow in Christ and in the knowledge of him. So please write to me. Send me a personal message on Instagram or Facebook. Or send me an email at tola633 at gmail.com. tola633 at gmail.com. Or you can send to me at pastor at tola.org. Pastor at tola.org. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I apologize. Um, for, for, for those who feel disappointed, I really do have five ways God wants us to get out of, uh, deal with depression and mental illness. But I, 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 I don't want to take too much of your time. I felt in my spirit somebody needed to be saved. So please forgive me. I will get back to it. If not today, I will get back. Uh, if not this coming Sunday to be next Wednesday. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Those watching on Instagram, we're going to come back live. I think the one hour limit is off. We're going to come back. So come back and join us very soon 
in Jesus' name. Those that are on Facebook, please still hang on. The service is still on. We're about to wrap up, and you will also be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus.